The other thing that's also quite scary is that because of mobile, because of digital, because of all of these different channels, the pace at which, or the, the pace of content creation is very, very quickly outpacing our ability to actually consume it. So for example, according to the number crunches, from the beginning of time, which is basically recorded history, whether it be caveman paintings and the like, to about 2003, we produced about 5 billion gigabytes of data, which I think we can all agree is a decent amount. Right? But here's the scary stat. We're now producing 5 billion gigabytes every 10 minutes. Right? So I'll just let that sink in. From the beginning of recorded history 2003, we're now doing that every 10 minutes. That's a lot of information out there. So it's fundamentally important for us to be thinking about how are people connected with one another? How are people talking to each other? How do we then as brands or as advisors to brands and businesses help them understand how to connect with these people in a way that is going to resonate in a way that's going to work for and that is going to be that is going to be beneficial not only for yourself as a business, but it's going to be beneficial to the customer that you're trying to connect with. The other thing that's also quite important to think about is the fact that everything competes with everything. Whether it's talking about a Facebook post from your grandmother, I remember when my mother first joined Facebook a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it says, what's on your mind? And her first post ever, my poor mother was, nothing much. <laughs> so we thought you were profile is like nothing much with it. <laughs> so whether it's a message from your mother, whether it's uh, programming on Netflix, or whether it's messaging, whatever it may be, everything is competing with everything. Which means mobile really has fundamentally ch challenged everything that we know about marketing. Why is that? It's because of the pace. We've never seen anything like this before in history. Think about how fast mobile and digital adoption has been compared to radio and television or any other channels. Which means that as brands, or as custodians and advisors to brands, we have had to also be playing catch up. And what's interesting is that it's not only us who have to play catch up, it's the guys who are actually building the platforms who are playing catch up. Think about Facebook, go back to 2012. Back in 2012 when Facebook had their, their IPO, their share price opened up at about $38 a share, if I'm not mistaken, and the market asked, what is your mobile strategy? And there was crickets from Facebook. Remember when we used to talk to them about how important mobile was? And to them, mobile was basically a cut-down version of the desktop web. They didn't think about mobile. All of a sudden, they had to now scramble and think about, okay, we need to build a mobile-first platform. And I remember, you know, the story within Facebook, um, the law is um, Mark had a global call with everybody within the company and said, from today onwards, I don't want to see anything that is not mobile-first. If you're going to present anything to me, it needs to be on a mobile phone. I want to see what everything looks like on a mobile phone. That was that was the decision that was taken, and a good thing that he did that as well because now over 90% of the revenue at Facebook is mobile. If you hadn't made that pivot, Facebook doesn't exist as a company today. So the change that happens is not only unique to everybody else. Facebook has a platform as well, and you know, and Google, Microsoft have had to also think about had to catch, have to play catch up as well. Everybody is constantly thinking about what our customers, what our consumers doing, and we build the platform accordingly.